Welcome to Electro Online and the next type of problem we're going to look at using conservation momentum concepts is elastic collision. So what does elastic collision mean? It means that the energy is conserved. 100% of the energy is conserved, meaning whatever energy we had before the collision equals the energy we have after the collision. Now in real life, that is very doubtful, very unlikely for that to happen. Usually in any collision, some energy is lost. But for the sake of argument here to show you how to do these types of problems, because there are some theoretical situations, especially when we deal with very small objects like nuclei and neutrons and protons and things like that, when they collide, energy can be conserved in those particular situations. So at least we should know how to do these types of problems. All right, so the, the idea is that energy is conserved. They don't stick together so that the objects have independent velocities after the collision. And so how do we solve that? Again, we're going to have to solve for two unknowns, and if we then only use the conservation momentum, we're not going to be able to solve it because there's two unknowns there. We need a second equation, which can be gotten by also considering that energy is conserved. So what we're going to do here is we have one equation where we say that uh, momentum initial equals momentum final. That's a terrible looking P. I was going to write something different. So momentum initial equals momentum final and we can also write that energy initial equals energy final and this should be able to give us two equations to solve for both of the unknowns v1 final and v2 final all right so this will then be written as m1 v1 initial plus m2 v2 initial equals m1 v1 final plus m2 v2 final and over here we're going to write that one half mv1 initial squared plus one half mv2 initial squared equals one half mv1 final squared plus one half mv2 final squared. Now, to make the problem a little bit easier the first time through, I let the velocity of the second block be zero before the collision. So here we have a stationary block, mass two kilograms, being hit from behind by a four kilogram block moving at 10 meters per second. And let's find out what their final velocities are after the collision. Again, assuming that energy is conserved. They don't stick together. All right. So we can make this go to zero because the second block is not moving before the collision. And this goes to zero as well. Also here, notice that all the one halves cancel out. So we don't need the one halves. All right. Simplifying this as much as possible by plugging in the numbers that we have and I'm going to leave off the units to make it a lot cleaner If you put in kilograms and meters per second everywhere, it just looks a little bit more messy So we'll just keep it clean. All right, so m1 v1 so we have 4 kilograms times 10 meters per second equals m1 which is 4 times v1 final plus 2 times v2 final so here we have 40 equals 4v1 final plus 2v2 final and dividing both sides by 2 we get 20 equals v oh, oh, I forgot to divide the 4 by 2 that gives me 2v1 final plus 1v2 final so here I have my first equation this is an f final that relates v1 final and v2 final together but remember we have two unknowns so we cannot yet solve this equation we need a second equation that allows us to solve for the two unknowns so now i'm going to use the energy equation so here we have uh, m1 that should say m1 m2 m1 m2 i forgot the subscript for my masses all right, so we have uh, four kilograms moving with initial velocity of 10 meters squared, 10 meters per second squared equals mass one, which is four times V1 final squared plus uh, two times V2 final squared. I guess I don't really need to put parentheses around that. That's extra stuff I don't need. All right, simplifying that a little bit more. That's, uh, that's 100 times 4, that it would be 400 equals 4v1 final squared plus 2v2 final squared. And again, I can divide both sides of this equation by 2, make it a little simpler. So we have 200 equals 2v1 final squared plus v2 final squared. And so there's my second equation. Notice two equations, two unknowns, algebraically. I should be able to solve that. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to solve this equation for V2 final. So we have V2 final equals 20 minus 2 times V1 final. And take that and substitute that into 
v2 right there. That way I will get rid of the v2s in the second equation and only have an equation with one unknown v1 final. So let's do that. And let's me move over here because I need more room. So I get 200 equals 2v1 final squared plus. Instead of v2 final, I write what v2 final is equal to for my first equation. So that would be 20 minus, oop, minus 2v1 final. And I have to square that. My square is still there. Okay. So now I go ahead and work that out. Simplify the equation. 200 equals 2v1 final squared plus this term squared, 400, minus twice the product of those two. So 2 times 20 is 40 times 2 would be 80. It's minus 80 v1 final and then plus 4v1 final squared. Now I have a quadratic equation. I'll move everything over to one side, collect common terms. So we have 0 is equal to 2 plus 4 is 6 v1 final squared minus 80 v1 final. And then if I bring the 200 over to the right side, 400 minus 200 gives me plus 200 for the constant. And here I have my quadratic formula or equation that I can solve using the quadratic formula. So let's now solve that for v1 final. So v1 final equals minus b, since b is minus 80, minus b would be plus 80. 80 plus or minus the square root of b squared would be minus 80 squared minus 4 times a, which is 6, times c, which is 200. And the whole thing is divided by 2a, which would be 12. So v1 final equals... That will leave me probably with two answers, because of the plus or minus in here. And one of them will seem plausible, the other one probably not. So let's find out. Okay, 4 times 6 times 200 equals, that's 4,800, minus, minus 80 squared equals. That's much better. Ooh, something didn't work out. A little lost there for a minute. My calculator was not cooperating. Actually, it's the operator that was not cooperating with the calculator. So 1,600 divided by 12. So this is equal to 80 plus or minus 40 divided by 12, which will leave us two possible answers. So if I add the two together, 80 plus 40 is 120 divided by 12 gives me 10. So that would be 10 meters per second. Or the second possibility is 80 minus 40, which is 40 divided by 12 which gives me 3.33 meters per second. So these are the possible velocities for V1 after the collision, V1 final. So which one of those two answers is plausible, which one is not? So here we have V um, mass 1 with initial velocity of 10 meters per second colliding with this mass right here and then presumably continuing at 10 meters per second. Not possible. So this would be an impossible answer. The only other possibility is that it collides and therefore slows down to 3.33 meters per second, and that seems a lot more plausible. So this is the presumed correct answer of, oh, there goes. so that's a plausible answer for V1 final. Now coming back over here, this allows me now to solve for V2 final. So V2 final is equal to 20 minus 2 times V1 final, which is 3.33, 33 meters per second, and so 2 times 33 2 times 3.33 equals, ah, so that would be equal to 13.33 meters per second. That would be V2 final. And that seems plausible because there you have a smaller mass being hit by a big block. It was stationary after the collision. It will be moving at 13.3 meters per second. And V1 final, which means the mass the big mass here after collision will be moving to the right at 3.3 meters per second. So there are your two answers of this particular problem. And that's how you do that. Again, quick, quick summary here. Use the conservation momentum. You'll get a linear equation with two unknowns, V1 final and V2 final. You then use the energy conservation equation because you were told that energy is conserved, 100% conserved, so therefore energy initial equals energy final. You also end up with an equation with V1 and V2 uh, final 
as the two unknowns, but that will be a quadratic equation. You now have to solve these two equations simultaneously. Recommended that you use this equation to solve for one of the two unknowns and plug that into your quadratic equation. You now have a quadratic equation with just one unknown. Use the quadratic formula. You end up with two values. Typically, you can figure out by looking at those which one is possible, which one is not. Take the one that's possible, plug it back into the linear equation to find the other unknown, and then you have your two final velocities after the collision. And that's how you do that problem.